Welcome to the Location, the Locator News Program. I'm Ian O'Neill. And I'm Alyssa Menzer, and here's your news now. On Friday, September 17th, Cabrini Night at the Phillies was held at Citizens Bank Park. Students, faculty, alumni, and families enjoyed the game with the entire Cabrini community. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the night. Hi, I'm Danielle Alio, live on location, and as you can see, I am at the one and only Citizens Bank Park, the home of the 2008 World Series champions, the Philadelphia Phillies, and I am at the fantastic Cabrini Night at the Phillies. As you can see, everyone's having a fantastic time. Let's check it out. On September 17th, Cabrini held its annual Cabrini Night at the Phillies. The night started out with the choir singing the national anthem. My favorite part of coming to the Phillies game is just like being, getting, getting to like see friends and hang with them outside of class and having a good time. And of course, especially it's even better if the Phillies win. Go Phillies! It was really fun. Um, it was really fun when um, Jason Worth hit that home run. Now for the Fun was had by all as the Cabrini dance team performed their yearly routine. As you can see, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of excitement here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies are in the lead. It's 9-1, to one, top of the ninth. I'm going to get back and watch the game. Back to you with the news desk. Catholic Relief Service ambassadors from Cabrini College and Villanova University were educated on social justice issues on Friday, September 17th. CRS ambassadors work to bring awareness to their campuses on the issues. Popular events on campus that are sponsored by CRS include fair trade volleyball and trips to Washington, D.C. For more information, please visit thelocator.com or crs.org. Tom Collins, the United States veteran who recently retired, came to Cabrini to share his experiences with the engagement of the Common Good classes on September 2nd. He shared stories and enlightened students about the poverty-stricken conditions he saw on a daily basis and how Haiti is the main focus of his work. For more information, please visit thelocator.com. The weekend of September 25th, Cabrini welcomes students, parents, and alumni to campus to enjoy the annual family weekend. Fun events and activities for everyone are the focus of the annual event and a new addition this year will be President George's State of the College address. Afterwards, there will be a meet and greet with the president and faculty. Other fun-filled events are Big Prize Bingo, the Athletic Hall themed dinner, Clue Mystery Dinner Theater, and the Fall Honors Convocation. The induction of former men's basketball coach and athletic director John Zeke into the College Athletic Hall of Fame will be a big alumni draw during the weekend. This past Monday, the wellness workshop was held. The topic was eating for wellness with Dr. Negron. Let's take a look at the food prep demonstration organized by Jess Huda for Healthy Monday. Hi, I'm Megan Conti, live on location, reporting in with a Live and Learn series with Anna Nerajan, who will be reporting on how to make healthy oatmeal. Thanks for the invitation. I am Dr. Anna Negron. I'm a family physician. I have been in practice for 30 years and I come really happy to discuss eating for wellness. Uh, what we are doing today in this program is distinguishing sick care from health care. Sick care being taking medications for symptoms and health care being really protecting our health. And we're going to do this using food as medicine. A website called Try Something New, you know, and it walks you step by step through this process. Fruit really makes it. Yeah. And do these take just this taste or is it non tasting? You know, you, you can try. My name's Jackie Neary and I'm the women's field hockey and lacrosse coach here. And the Healthy Monday, which is ran, I guess, through um, health services along with Jess Huda. It's my second year being involved with it and it's just a great event. Today was a uh, a very good recipe that we received on oatmeal that I know uh, I will share with my teams and just trying to eat the right things and be conscious of choices that we're making when we're eating. So it's a, it's a great little resource for this faculty and staff on campus. I'm Megan Conti reporting live for location. Now back to the studio. Open Campus Dialogue is the goal of a series of sessions called Donuts and Diversity. 
The latest conversations featured discussions about struggles faced by both blacks and gays and the prejudice and acceptance felt by both groups. Privacy can be hard to come by in college. Since many students share their dorm rooms with more than one person, it can be hard to find time for themselves. Many students, especially freshmen, come from a home living situation where they have their own space. Because of this, students must figure out how to work things out with their roommate while also finding time for themselves. You can read more about this topic on aliquider.com. And now let's check in with Liz and her Person of the Week. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Person of the Week. Today I have the privilege of interviewing President of Cabrini College, Dr. Marie Angelella George. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so happy to have you. My pleasure to be here, Liz. Thank you. As an experienced strategic planner, are there any specific plans you intend on implementing this year or in years to come? Uh, I think the, uh, the, to me, one of the most important plans that's uh, on our plate this year is to continue uh, to implement our Justice Matters core curriculum. We have two years uh, of it in place and we need to uh, continue to plan for the, uh, to fully integrate it through the four years of study. So I think that's uh, one of the uh, um, greatest uh, important uh, strategic initiatives that we started with and that we need to keep our eye on as we move now forward. Now has your faith-based background, your involvement with CRS um, contributed to your plans? Definitely. Uh, as with Catholic Relief Services, uh, the you know the that which underpins our Justice Matters curriculum, our social justice emphasis, is uh, a set of teachings that come out of our my faith, out of the uh, Catholic social tradition. Uh, so it's very much uh, shaped me, uh, shaped what is happening here at Cabrini. But um, it comes out of our tradition, but it is universal. Uh, in its appeal, uh, the attention to the common good. You'll hear that in many other faith-based institutions, not just those who have a Catholic identity. Do you find it intimidating to be the leader of Cabrini, or has your experiences at St. Anselm College and the University of Scranton prepared you for your responsibilities at Cabrini? Well, I, I consider it to be an honor to be the president of Cabrini College, and I really mean that. It's, it's a true blessing for me. Um, I think um, I have been prepared well to be in this position. Uh, I, I honestly thought in, before I arrived uh, that I would somewhat be nervous or whatever, but I think it's the right fit for me. Uh, my experiences, as you alluded to, uh, really did prepare me well. Uh, I have a, a lot of years in Catholic higher education, uh, you know, from a faculty member to a department chair to a vice president to an executive vice president. So I have both of what I would call breadth and depth and understanding uh, how to run and lead a, a, a college. But to have uh, the privilege of leading one college uh, is, is really uh, uh, something that I cherish. And I, uh, I pray every day that I'm, uh, you know, doing the best I can for all of you, our students, and to represent our alumni well. And now if you could relay one message to the students at Cabrini, what would it be? Oh, I would say to seize the day. <laughs> uh, and I think that's uh, just uh, maybe a euphemism for, you know, just um, take advantage of so many of the opportunities that are here. Uh, I think we have here at Cabrini uh, a wide range of uh, experiences that are available for our students. And you don't necessarily, as you might in a larger institution, have to compete for a spot or um, you know, wait to see if you're, you, know, you can get involved. I think um, to get involved in whatever are your passions that you may discover while you're here or that you bring with you um, to socially, intellectually, physically, if it's athletics, theater, um, just to, to get involved and soak up the educational experience because there's nothing like these undergraduate years. You'll right. cherish them and, and you want to just uh, really uh, get the most out of them. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We were so happy to have you here with oh, us. Again, my pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Back to you at the news desk. And now let's take a trip around the world. Due to an increase in food recalls, a new bill is being proposed to protect consumers. The bill has received approval from the food industry and consumers, but has yet to be passed because of disagreements over cost and an internet campaign. An American hiker who was kept in Iran for 13 months is back in the U.S. Because of her release, the president of Iran is asking for eight Iranians who are de being detained in the U.S. to be let go in exchange. Three months after the leak began, the BP oil spill is officially dead. This means that the oil no longer puts the Gulf in danger. 
President Obama assured the country that the government will still help in the cleanup in the Gulf of Mexico. Members of a religious group from California have been found safe after the fear that they might, have, might be committing mass suicide. The group believed to be a cult was found safely praying in Palmdale, California. The group is made up of immigrants from El Salvador. And now let's check in with Allie for your sports update. So what do you have for us this week, Allie? Well, this week was a winner for Cabrini Sports. Women's field hockey won their first game at home 4-0 against Misericordia. Women's soccer crushed Cedarcrest in their CSAC opener 7-0, and women's volleyball defeated Wesley 3-0. Women's tennis also dominated in an 8-1 victory over Lebanon Valley College, and on Monday, Cabrini sophomore Gabriella Durand was named the CSAC Player of the Week. Durand owns a 12-4 combined record for the Cabrini women's tennis team in 2010. Our Fighting Phils continue in first place over the Atlanta Braves in the race for the division title. The Phillies were ahead three games going into the series against the Braves Monday night. With the triple threat pitching made up of Oswald, Halliday, and Hamels, fans are hoping the Phils come out on top over the Braves, being that much closer to winning the division and on their way to fight for the National League Championship for the third year in a row. The Eagles picked up their first win against the Detroit Lions last Sunday in an exciting 35-32 victory. Michael Vick was at it again, completing 21 out of 34 attempts for 284 yards and two touchdowns. With another outstanding game by the second-string quarterback, it's leaving one question on every Eagles fan's mind. Who should be the starting quarterback, Cobb or Vic? We asked Cabrini students their opinion on the latest Philadelphia controversy. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I think Michael Vick should start because he proved himself, unlike Cobb, who didn't prove himself during the preseason or the first year. I think Michael Vick should start based on what he did last week and when he came in for Kevin Cobb. I think he gives a better chance of winning. And I gotta say, I think Cobb should be starting just because he's still young and he has he needs a few games to get into his rhythm. I mean, Vick's had his chance and he's looking really good, but I think if Cobb's given a few games to get ready, he can be. And I think that Michael Vick should be starting in next week's game because Kevin Cobb's coming back from an injury. You know, Michael Vick stepped up to take his place. It was his first start since 06. He threw for 284 yards and a great solid game and he's just going to get benched for that, it's ridiculous. He should be starting. And in my honest opinion, I think that Michael Vick should start because he gives the offense a better chance to score and he's, he's very athletic. For all you Michael Vick fans out there, after Tuesday night's press conference, Andy Reid has decided that Vick will be the new starting quarterback for the Eagles. The Eagles hope to get their second win of the season against Jacksonville this Sunday. Well, that's all the news I have for you today. I'm Ali Radalico. Tune in next week for all the latest sports updates on Cabrini and Philadelphia sports teams. Thanks, Ali. And now let's hear from Danielle with your entertainment news. Hey, guys. Danielle here with your entertainment news. This week is all about fall season premieres. Shows such as Glee, NCIS, House, and Grey's Anatomy will be making their ways back into our nightly routines. However, there are some new shows which appear to be promising and could very well become a part of that routine as well. Fox has a new show coming out called Raising Hope about a man who learns he has a baby and has full custody of her after his ex-lover ends up in jail. Looks like it will be another hilarious show. Another upcoming show that people can't stop talking about is, re is a remade series, Hawaii Five-0, which originally aired from 1968 to 1980 for 12 seasons. People are curious to see if it will become popular with the current generation as well. And now let's hear from Joe for your album of the week, brought to you by 89.1 WYBFFM, The Burn. Program. Highlights.